<clears throat> Seated in the auditorium today are family and friends who have in many different ways supported these candidates to the goal, to reach the goal represented by this ceremony. On the platform are the, are the college faculty and staff who've motivated, encouraged, and inspired these students as they completed their coursework and their college experience. And before us are the candidates for graduation who have become good friends, mentors, and colleagues, developing re relationships that will serve them well as they move into the future together. We join then as members of an extended support network to celebrate our involvement with these candidates and to witness their accomplishment. That celebration now begins. Presiding over this commencement ceremony is the president of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, Dr. Davy Jane Gilmore. Good morning and welcome to this magnificent facility. This facility that began 85 years ago as the Capitol Theater and just celebrated its 20th birthday as the Community Arts Center. Like you, it is a beautiful part of the Penn College story. When the class of 2013 leaves today, its members too will claim a unique place in our history. Legacy is on our minds a lot lately as we count down to the 100th anniversary of an institution that has proudly provided a strong foundation for thousands and thousands of graduates. It has been fun and enlightening to look back to where we have been, and in some ways, we've come full circle. In 1914, for example, when we first offered adult education classes in the high school basement, the Model T Ford went into mass production. One of our newest majors, the Automotive Restoration Technology Program, gives our students access to a variety of vintage vehicles, including a visit this past March from, yes, you guessed it, a Model T Ford. There have been many challenges in the past hundred years, and we have held our own against the pounding tides of change, keeping up with technology, the shifting demands of the workplace, and the economic ebb and flow that must be managed in order for us to survive. Through conscientious stewardship, dedicated faculty and staff, and students who have honored our faith in them by earning the right to walk across this stage, we have grown into a national leader of applied technology education. It is those soon-to-be graduates that we now turn, joining their proud supporters and applauding their accomplishments. Your student speaker stands ready to ably represent you. Their faculty members are on hand to enjoy the company one last time. And the rest of us just want to share in this, your singular moment in history. So to the class of 2013, sit back, relax, and enjoy this affirmation of your success. And to your family and friends, your frequent shoulders, and your constant cheerleaders, we welcome you to this magnificent facility and this most important celebration. Thank you. I'd like to now introduce Mr. Elliot Strickland, Chief Student Affairs Officer. President Gilmore, Chairman Secor, Provost Starkey, distinguished faculty and staff, family, friends, and most importantly, the graduating class of May 2013. It is my pleasure this morning to introduce your student commencement speaker. Now I'm gonna start this uh, introduction off with a broad and sweeping generalization. I think welders are some of the coolest people in the world. And I'm not just saying this because they have the coolest tools and they get to work with them uh, in using their skills and abilities to build some of the most amazing things. I have met a disproportionate number of our welding and fabrication students who are truly Renaissance men and women. They are artists, they are leaders, and they are thinkers. And our student commencement speaker this morning 
is just such a person. Kyle Mullen's time at Penn College seems to be one in which he has given back more to this institution in his leadership and service than we have given to him. He was a leader in Sigma Nu fraternity. He served as a senator and executive vice president in the Student Government Association. He was a member of the College Judicial Council, and he served as a resident assistant for his final two years as a senior RA. This Dean's List student has also succeeded in the classroom. Now this is a young man, he's a welding major, welding and fabrication. And in his last semester in college, he took courses in art history from the ancient world through the 15th century and in World Civilization II where he studied humankind from the 1500s to present. And he got an A in both of those classes. Kyle graduates today with a Bachelor of Science in Welding and Fabrication Engineering Technology after earning a perfect 4.0 GPA in his senior year. Please. Please welcome your 2013 student commencement speaker, Mr. Kyle Mullen. Good morning. Let me begin by first thanking Mr. Elliot Strickland for that very nice introduction. I'd like to also thank the faculty, staff, and administration here at the Pennsylvania College of Technology. The impact that you've made on our lives will definitely be everlasting. I would also like to say thank you to the family and friends of each graduate here today. We wouldn't have been able to make it this far in our lives without your support, and we thank you for that. Lastly, I'd like to thank you, the Pennsylvania College of Technology Class of 2013. I thank you for making these last couple of years of our lives ones that we will remember forever. You may not recognize it, but we've been through a lot together. The roofs have changed from blue to red. The Susquehanna room, as you all know it, by a different name, has now become the Keystone Dining Room. And most importantly, there's now more than one girl in each of your class, <laughs> usually. You know, when I was notified that I had received the opportunity to be the student speaker here today, I was almost in a state of shock. This was quite the honor after my four years here at Penn College. So as I received the notification, I began reading countless speeches and watching YouTube videos over and over again. And I found a pattern starting to begin amongst all those videos and speeches. They were almost all the same. You get that same standard speech over and over again. So after much thought, I decided, why follow this path when Penn College is much different than any other college or university out there? Let us look at this from a different point of view. How many colleges or universities have every make, model, and color of lifted diesel truck driving around their campus? <laughs> How many of those trucks are then followed by lowered Honda Civics that are so loud you can hear them well before they come into your site? And most importantly, how many other schools have off for one of the biggest holidays there is, the first day of hunting season? <laughs> In all seriousness, Penn College provides us with an atmosphere unlike any other major college or university out there today. We provide employees to the job market each and every year that can do, do jobs so skilled most people won't even contemplate the idea to even try. We provide employees, like I said, of the utmost caliber each year. To, well, there are examples of that. I'm not an expert diesel technician. I'm not a civil engineer. And for those of you who know me personally, I am most certainly not a graphic designer. In all honesty, I never even had to email before coming to Penn College, let alone know how to do half of the amazing things that these graduates know how to do today. Each year, we're stuck listening to the mainstream media criticize our generation for being lazy and lacking in work ethic. Well, by earning the privilege to stand here today in our caps and gowns, we've proved them wrong. We have degrees that work. Most college graduates are struggling to find jobs in their field, yet Penn College graduates have a 95% job placement rating in their field. Each and every one of you, by earning your respective degree or certificate, has become a craftsperson of the utmost caliber. 
Your skills are so unique and so technical that you stand apart from any other college graduate in this country. Those skills and abilities are what truly unites us all as Penn College students and now alumni. Ultimately, my message is this. Take pride in everything you've done as well as everything you will accomplish. You've come so far to differentiate yourself by coming here today to get this degree or certificate. Why stop now? Continue your education. Learn from those who have come before you as well as teach those who will come after you. Be the best person you can be each day, and when times get hard, knuckle down and prove that you can rise to the occasion. It has been an honor and a privilege to speak on the behalf of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, class of 2013. Before I leave you to continue on with this morning's ceremony, I'd like to just take this final opportunity to thank everyone here at Penn College, the family and friends of each graduate, and most importantly, the graduates themselves. I leave you now with a very powerful quote that I want each of the graduates to take to heart. For those of you who know me well, it may come as a shock that I've chosen to quote the First Lady, Mrs. Michelle Obama. Putting politics aside, the First Lady had some very inspiring words that we can all learn from. In her speech to Virginia Tech's class of 2012, she said just this. I just want to pause for a moment on the word invent, because the phrase isn't succeed in the future, it is not plan for the future, or do the best you can in the future. It is invent the future. And with those three words comes a simple message, a call to chart your own course and live your life on your own terms. In the end, it's up to each of us to define ourselves. It's up to each of us to invent our own future with the choices we make and the actions we take. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy today's ceremony. The Alumni Achievement Award recognizes alumni who have graduated within the past 10 years who demonstrate achievement in professional, career, or dedicated volunteer service, demonstrate the importance of their Penn College education, and continually support the mission of the college. This year, we, offer, we honor Jennifer Brinkley, a 2005 alumni of the college's Welding, Fabrication, and Engineering Technology Baccalaureate Program. And I will tell you, as we were having our pictures taken upstairs, it was eight years ago that we had our pictures taken before. Neither of us changed, of course, in those eight years. And that's because she was a commencement speaker. So there is something about these welding students. <laughs> During her college years, Jennifer showed commitment to the professional career development as a leader in the student chapter of the American Welding Society and through competing in Skills USA contests. She took first place at the state level from 2002 through 2004, and third place at the national level in 2002 for extemporaneous speech. She prepared for a lifetime of learning with a focus on diversity and social awareness by working as a resident assistant in our dorms, supporting such topics as robotics, non-destructive testing in our tutoring center, and bringing together our international students to learn more about regional, social, and economic culture. In 2003, she graduated with her associate's degree in welding technology and was presented with the Penn College Welding Faculty Award. In 2005, she earned her four-year degree in welding and fabrication engineering technology, and she received the Lewis H. Bardo Memorial Award to her devotion to duty, helpfulness to others, friendliness, and high ideals. After graduation, she appeared in a variety of promotional materials for the college and advocated the importance of her education and for her non-traditional career. The difference in work and pay is, and self-esteem is priceless, she said. She was also featured in a welding episode of the award-winning Degrees That Work Career Exploration Series produced by Penn College for public television. She was profiled by Byron Academy, a New York-based online community where young women in grades seven through 12 can foster and expand their interest in science, technology, and engineering and math. She accepted this opportunity to offer young women an example of the prospects that exist in STEM careers. 
she's reassuring them that it is acceptable to be intelligent and skilled in fields that are typically male dominated. Her Penn College education has provided Jennifer with the academic and hands-on experiences that helped her find what she refers to as, a, I quote, her dream job, one that allows her to grow in leadership and personal fulfillment. As a manufacturing specialist for Toyota Motor Engineering and Manufacturing in North America in Kentucky, she has overseen several large-scale projects at different Toyota plants across North America. This experience has given her a full understanding of lean manufacturing and problem solving. Having worked in Japan and Canada has provided her growth opportunities in leadership, diversity, and cultural experience. On a personal level, she has continued her commitment to diversity and learning through her involvement with her employer's Young Professional Business Partnering Group. She is chair of the Hispanic Committee of St. Francis and John, and John Catholic Parish and volunteered with the Scott County Humane Society in Georgetown, Kentucky. Please join me in a warm welcome for the 2013 Alumni Achievement Award recipient, Jennifer Brinkley. I would like to extend my congratulations to the class of 2013. You've done an excellent job. Please continue taking advantage of every opportunity that's laid before you. Thank you. The Mentorship Award recognizes alumni, individuals, or businesses that have made significant or ongoing contributions to the education and development of Pennsylvania College of Technology students by providing opportunities or professional guidance. This year, we honor Robert Capps, a longtime friend and advocate of Penn College. He is Director of Recruiting for Alan A. Myers American Infrastructure, a heavy civil construction contractor and material supplier. With offices throughout the mid-Atlantic region of the United States, American infrastructure takes on everything from small water transmission lines to complete highway reconstructions. American infrastructure has been recruiting at our career fairs for the past 25 years, and Bob has been there for the past 23 of those years. He says he keeps coming back because of our product, our students. He likes their work ethic, he likes that they graduate with a good understanding of their disciplines. And today, American Infrastructure employs 48 of our alumni, a mix of heavy equipment operators, technicians, civil engineers, surveyors, HVAC technicians, and construction managers. The company provides valuable internships and summer work experiences for our students, and they help our students get the training they need. The company established the American Infrastructure Endowed Scholarship, providing financial assistance to Penn College students outside Penn College students. Outside of American Infrastructure, Bob promotes the college through his involvement with trade associations like the American Associated Builders and Contractors. He is the member of the ABC's National Workforce Development Committee and is consultant and vice president for business development. He serves on the board of directors and executive committee of the Architecture, Construction, and Engineering, or ACE, mentor program of Eastern Pennsylvania. Program mentors offer career guidance and understanding of the industry and the workplace, behind the scenes access to construction sites, training, on presentation and team building skills, scholarship opportunities, and introductions to college programs like ours for high school students. He volunteers as an advisor for various career and technical schools and secondary programs. The relationships that he has developed has fostered great articulation agreements between the colleges and these schools. Of course, he serves on our own heavy construction equipment operator emphasis advisory committee. And according to his nominator, he encourages young people to take a look at Penn College and will do all he can do to assist in their efforts, including arranging visits to high schools by our admissions representatives and coordinating on-campus tours. In fact, he recently brought his own son, 
who is a high school junior to Penn College so that he can begin to determine which program at Penn College is of most interest. Active in his community, he is chairman of the Civil Service Commission of Upper Gwinnett Township and serves on the board of directors of Tomorrow's Promise and the Federation of Neighborhood Centers. He serves on his church building committee and the construction of a new parish center. He's currently on the finance committee as well. His hobbies include sports cars, bicycling, and fitness, and he and his wife Anita, along with their two sons, live in Montgomery County. We are pleased to present the 2013 Mentorship Award to Robert Capps. Uh, Dr. Gilmore, I want to thank you very much for the kind words, and uh, I'm honored to receive an award and a recognition from Penn College for something that I love to do. Um, it's, oh, by the way, Kyle, nice job. Um, I can't believe it's 23 years since I've been coming up here recruiting and hiring students, and if you do the math, that's longer than most of you have been around on this earth. <laughs> But I can tell you this, from the students that we've hired in our organization and watching their success, Penn College has given you the foundation to build a very successful career. Today, you're graduates. On Monday, you're gonna be employees somewhere. So, as an employer, let me give you my three principles for success. Number one, attitude. Each day when you wake up, it's the first major decision you have to make. Find out how to make it positive. Your coworkers will be attracted to you and they will help you succeed. Number two, never be late. It's okay to be early. When you show up early, the people that you're gonna be working with, your new coworkers, see that you have an interest in their success as well as your own, and they will help you succeed. Number three, know what you know and know what you don't know. And what's that mean? That means ask questions. Everybody knows as a new employee that you don't know much. So when you ask your coworkers for help, they see that, that you, that you really care about your job and about the company you're working for, and again, they will step up to help you. So, please, take my advice. Today's your graduation. Savor every single moment. You've all worked so hard to get here. Enjoy the day. Thank you. For nearly 100 years, teaching has been the core. It helps us flourish as an institution, and it is an essential half of the equation that adds up to student success. Accordingly, we place high value on the teaching and learning process, and each year we recognize select members of our faculty who demonstrate the excellence and dedication required to help our students find the very best within themselves. Distinguished Teaching Awards are presented each May at commencement to full-time faculty members who have been nominated by students and colleagues for their excellence in instructional performance. By the end of the weekend, three more honorees will join the impressive roster of colleagues who have been chosen since 1982. Yesterday afternoon, we presented the Veronica M. Master Teacher Award, the most esteemed of our faculty tributes, to Jerry Luke, Associate Professor of Business Administration, Management, and Marketing. This morning, we will add two recipients to the Excellence in Teaching Award. And I'd like to keep these a surprise as long as I can. So I'm going to provide enough background information not to give it away. I hope you will indulge me in some of the nominators' com comments. The first recipient has been characterized in this way. He gleans what is most important from his course content and shares the wheat, the germ, and the seed of learning with his students. He does not lose sight of what is most important in improving the intellectual lives of his students. 
and he equips them with skills as well as knowledge to na navigate the torturous path of human relations. Always willing to try something new, to discard what does not work, and to embrace what does, even if it's not his idea. He does not sacrifice quality for brevity. He focuses on constructive in the constructive criticism quote, always offering an observation of strength before a recommendation for improvement. He is accessible to all students in the senses of the word. They can find him, reach him, speak to him, and they understand him. One of the most influential teachers I have ever heard. He holds a bachelor's degree in journalism and a master's degree in communication studies from both Bloomsburg University, a state certification in communication from Susquehanna University. And it is my pleasure to present the first of our 2013 Excellence in Teaching Awards to John Mays, Instructor of Speech Communication and Composition. How awesome to be introduced as teaching public speaking and not have any prepared remarks. <laughs> so I'm, I'm about to do what I tell my students never, ever, ever to do, to speak without practicing. Um, I'm so grateful to get to do what I do. And there's really nothing beyond that to say that there are so many people that do so many other things that all I have to do is teach, and, and I'm grateful for every one of them. And I'm grateful to all of you for having the opportunity to teach you. Thank you. Our next Excellence in Teaching Award winner had wonderful things said about him as well. So let me begin by quoting should be the gold standard for Penn College faculty. He keeps courses fresh and pushes students hard and fair. He is very excited about teaching and routinely shows that he is truly passionate. He expects his students to work hard and be passionate as well. He inspires students, if not directly through his confidence in each person's ability, then most certainly through his intensity and his interest in the subject. An expert in the field, this superior skill translates into a superior experience in the classroom. Hiring more candidates like him will create a world-class program that is synonymous with well-rounded students that are ready for the workplace. A positive motivator that knows how to connect with students, he makes you think, learn, and work hard. An alumnus of Penn College, he has earned an associate degree in welding technology and a bachelor's degree in welding and fabrication engineering technology. Please help me congratulate the second of our 2013 Excellence in Teaching honorees, Ryan Good, instructor of welding. Proud of every one of them. Well, I'm uh, <laughs> at a loss for words as well. You might want to note the date and time on that one. <laughs> but uh, uh, this this is very honoring, and I'm, I'm very humbled to receive this. But uh, I got to be honest, the the biggest reward I get is hearing the success of the stories that uh, you gentlemen and 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 uh, uh, women come back uh, with you know being successful, having a positive impact. Uh, that's the best reward that any of us. I think can receive as faculty. So, um, congratulations to all of you, and and I appreciate this uh, very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, as many of you know, the legal corporate body of the Pennsylvania College of Technology is its board of directors. This is the body that by our charter is given final responsibility for the governance, welfare, and all other interests pertaining to the college. Though some responsibilities are delegated, the ultimate authority rests with the board. At this time, I would like to call upon Dr. Robert Secor, member, chair of the board of directors, to authorize conferring of the degrees at this ceremony. Dr. Secor. This is a very special occasion for all of you. The degrees being awarded have come from hard work, from the guidance and wisdom of the faculty, and from strong support from your family and friends. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I extend to all of the graduates our congratulations and best wishes. And to all the supporting family members, the faculty and friends, I extend our thanks for your support. Now I turn to my official duty. Dr. Gilmore, by virtue of the authority vested in the Board of Directors of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, I authorize you on behalf of the Board to confer on each of these candidates the degree earned as certified by the appropriate school dean. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree please rise? Dr. Gilmore, upon recommendation of the faculty, I'm pleased to inform you that these men and women have satisfactorily completed the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, I do hereby confer upon you the Bachelor of Science degrees that you have earned with all of the rights and privileges and with congratulations of the Board of Directors, the administration, and the faculty. Congratulations. You may be seated. Will the candidates for all associate degrees and certificates please rise? Dr. Gilmore, upon recommendation of the faculty, I'm pleased to inform you that these women and men have satisfactorily completed the requirements for their respective associate degrees and certificates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, I do hereby confer upon you the associate degrees and certificates that you have earned with all of their rights and privileges and with congratulations from the Board of Directors, the faculty, and the administration. Congratulations. Would you please remain standing and would the baccalaureate graduates please rise? Ladies and gentlemen, you entered this theater a while ago as candidates for the degrees and certificates that you have earned. Just moments ago, I had the honor of conferring those degrees upon you. As a symbol of your entry into the world of educated men and women, I ask you to join me as I turn the graduation tassel of your class representative. This symbolizes that you are, in fact, now graduates of the Pennsylvania College of Technology. Congratulations. You may be seated. As individuals and institutions, we all pass through clear stages of development and points in time where we grow in new responsibilities. This is a transition event for all graduates. Today, the college will recognize individuals with academic honors. Outstanding achievement will be recognized for all students. The gold, silver, or white cords they wear during this ceremony, white for honors, silver for high honors, and gold for highest honors, can identify these students for you. Blue cords will signify achievement for our certificate students. And in addition, we are proud to recognize graduates who are members of Phi Theta Kappa. Their gold stoles and gold tassels will identify these students. We are also proud to recognize the graduates of Alpha Chi Honor Society and white stoles will identify those students. 
We would now like to recognize our veterans, identified by their red, white, and blue cords who are graduating, including those who have served in active duty, as well as those currently serving in all branches of the military. I would ask our veteran graduates to please stand. I know you're out there. I'd like to tell you about our Penn College veterans. They have earned five Purple Hearts, four Bronze Stars, 80 Iraq Campaign Medals, and 32 Afghanistan Campaign Medals. We're very proud. One of the saddest parts of this joyful day is farewell to students who have touched our lives endearing themselves in beautiful, unexpected, and lasting ways. This academic year, we said goodbye far too soon to Michael Storm Fisher, who had perhaps the greatest middle name I have ever heard. Michael died shortly before returning to Penn College last fall, a campus that he embraced with energy and endurance, that of a cross-country runner and the talent and the vision of the photographer that we knew him to be. He was both of those things, and yet he was so much more. He was a son, a grandson, a brother, a nephew, a cousin, an Eagle Scout, a tinkerer, a coach, a bicyclist, and a mischievous connoisseur of life. There are no words to comfort his family and many friends in this ongoing and unimaginable loss. But I can say thank you for the privilege of sharing his Penn College years. Michael has been described as indescribable, a true character with a quiet and quirky sense of humor, a carefree demeanor, and an eye for the extraordinary that exists within every day. He is missed, but we will forever have his photographs to remind us of the unique way in which he viewed our world. Penn College proud, Michael loved his campus family, the cross-country team with which he shared so much, the office where he was our longest serving student photographer, and the friends that he made so effortlessly. Having already earned an associate degree in mass media communication, he was just shy of his bachelor's degree in industrial and human factors design when he was cruelly taken from us. A coworker recalls that when the college announced a new offering in automotive restoration, Michael, known for working on his own car in the garage back home in New Jersey, seriously considered a third major. But, he sighed, mom says I have to graduate sometime. <laughs> that sometime has arrived, so it is with great sadness, but with a tremendous amount of pride, that I present the Fisher family with Michael's baccalaureate degree, a symbol of his hard work and dedication, and the indelible mark he left on all we're blessed to know him. I just want to say that um, Mike had a love-hate relationship with this place, and I'm sure a lot of you did too. Um, but he did call it home. When he left our house, he said, I'm going home. And what that means to us is that although we don't have Mike with us, we have a whole family, and there's a whole bunch of you up there, right? There you go. So thank you very much. And he did get to go for a ride in his restored car just last week. Thank you. For those of you who can't see, on the balcony are many of his cross-country runner friends. Thank you for coming. 
At this time, Carolyn Strickland, the Assistant Vice President of Academic Services, and the respective school representatives will help us present the candidates. Now we know this is a very special time for everyone in the room, and we welcome you to come down and take pictures if you'd like. We simply ask that you leave the area in front of the official photographer open so that he can capture his photographs as well. And with that, our presentation ceremony will now begin. President Gilmore, it's with much pride that I present the graduates of the Civil Engineering Technology Bachelor's Degree, Civil Engineering Technology Associate's Degree, and Surveying Technology Associate's Degree programs within the School of Industrial and Engineering Technologies. Thank you. Caleb Charles Anderson. Robert James Bastion, Jr. Matthew J. Delp. Nathan Lee Earl. Nicholas Michael Fetterhoff. Peter Aaron Genicopoulos. Brandon S. Haney. Ralph L. Hummel, Jr. Michael Edward Isley. Ryan Donald Janowitz. Sean W. Krause. Jordan S. Mosier. Joshua Lee Schmitz. Scott P. Sassina. Carrie A. Weber. Brian M. Young. Jacob Blair Fuller. Kanan Robert Gavitt. Miles Troy Musser. Andrew Allen Adams. Christian James Hunter. Jesse Ryan Newman. Drew M. Zettel. President Gilmore, it is my honor to present the graduates of computer-aided product design and computer-aided drafting technology, all within the School of Industrial and Engineering Technologies. Christopher John Alaba. Robert Thomas Barrier, Jr. Kendra N. Dutrow. Brock Tyler Gramley.
Jonathan E. Harris. Ryan Keith Kissenweather. Kyle J. Krish. James A. McEwen III. Joseph A. Rogers. Kyle William Scheid. Alex Michael Steslow. President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Electronics and Computer Engineering Technology Bachelors in Electronics and Computer Engineering Technology Robotics and Automation Emphasis within the School of Industrial and Engineering Technology. Zach A. Arancibia. Cameron J. Bowen. Joseph M. Harner II. Zachary Eric Lichert. Joseph D. Rothrock. Matthew Mark Sable II. Daryl W. Breon. Nathan M. Galbraith. Nicholas W. Kelly. Matthew J. Modzel. Clint E. Stahl. Michael Scott Williams. President Gilmore, I present the graduates of the Manufacturing Engineering Technology, Automated Manufacturing Technology, Machine Tool Technology, Machinist General within the School of Industrial and Engineering Technologies. Luke Jeffrey Bellum. Tyler J. Bennett. Christopher Mark Blejo. Michael J. Christopher. Colin L. Foreman. Justin William Holtz. Darren Scott Kanagi. Derek Daniel Kraling. Ryan Christopher Magora. John Thomas McCormack. <laughs> Timothy D. McMorrow. <laughs> Clifford B. Nanfelt. <laughs> Michael L. Ritzke, Jr. <laughs> Alex Michael Ressler. Patrick Joseph Anderson. Freistack. Freistack. Jesse J. Freistack. Joseph D. Wood. Blazer. Jonathan Jeffrey Blazer.
President Gilmore, it's my honor to present the graduates of Plastics and Polymer Engineering Technology within the School of Industrial and Engineering Technologies. Mohammed A. al -Sakabi. Mutadada al Mutadada Tamir al Yes. Tamir Nasar al Robert Lawrence Iring. Harry Patrick Kosholski. Joshua James Rice. President Gilmore, it's my extreme honor to present the graduates of Welding and Fabrication Engineering Technology Bachelor Degree and Welding Technology Associate Degree, all within the School of Industrial and Engineering Technology. Lindsay R. Anderson. Tyler S. Caldwell. Austin Jacob Clark. Samuel Edward Cleaver. Daniel E. DeMille. Josie G. Dreyer. Brett Gregory Hertzler. John E. Keck. Jonathan W. Kowalski. Robert James Lamb. Josh A. McCarsky. Cody J. Scalf. Jason C. Shipman. Eric Daniel Spear. Sean P. Turnbaugh. Tyler S. Boatwright. Derek Thomas Burgess. Brian T. Karuba. Jacob Lee Carey. Evan J. Depto. Timothy J. English. Kenneth J. Kurtz. Alex M. Maselli. Brandon A. Michael. Cody S. Nace. David M. O'Neill. Dylan Clayton Perchinski. Bradley J. Reed. William Barnes Rohrmiller. Andrew J. Rossi. Curran. Curran Eric Smith. Jonathan C. Spontak.
Jessica A. Garris. Uh, President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Graphic Communications Management, Graphic Communications Technology, Graphic Design, and Advertising Art, and Mass Media Communications within the School of Integrated Studies. Rebecca Ray Miller. <laughs> Dalton Ray Bayshore. Yeah. Angela R. Barletta. <laughs> Crystal J. Brocious. <laughs> Emily May Cogswell. Laria Ann Lapp. <laughs> Michelle Lucas. <laughs> Brittany Laurel Mace. <laughs> Kristen Paige Miller. <laughs> Michael A. Simonowski. Lewis R. Weaver. Matthew Ryan Botts. Rochelle Lee Jordan. Jenna Leah Walmer. Sam Chandler Finley. Cody A. Snyder. Michael Andrew Souter. Courtney M. Swinehart. President Gilmore. It's my honor to present the students from, the graduates from uh, Individual Studies and General Studies within the School of Integrated Studies. John Andrew Felice. <laughs> Caitlin Victoria Ulrich. And I would like to announce that I am not in the Integrated Studies or the General Studies, but the, I'm earning my degree in the Bachelor of Science for construction design technologies and also my associate degree for landscape technology. Thank you. President Gilmore, it's my honor to present the graduates in Applied Human Services, Human Services, and Early Childhood Education within the School of Integrated Studies. Kelly A. Allen. Megan Lee Barkoff. Ellen M. Bardo. Monica Faye Charles. Jared P. Corman. Nicole Noel English. McMullen. Yes. Judy L. McMullen. Shaney Marie Parks. Amber Brooke Phillips. Christina Lynn Robidoux. <laughs> Elaine Marie Rocky. Andrea Marie Shearer. <laughs> Ashley Marie Stuck. Nicole Ann Tawney. 
Andriana M. Benfer. Cheryl Lynn Kaiser McCarty. Christy N. Whitmer. Ashley C. Adams. Leah Marie Bear. Amanda A. Gaylor. Brian M. Ginter. Christina May Klein. Krista Marie Kondinsko. Jenna M. Lawrence. Alexandria J. Lundy. Michelle C. Markart. Kelsey A. McGarry. Kara L. Odorizzi. Tierney S. Snyder. Kirsty Alley Swisher. Chelsea R. Whitaker. President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Heavy Construction Equipment Technology, Caterpillar Emphasis, Operator Emphasis, and Technician Emphasis, also of Diesel Technology and On-Site Power Generation, all within the School of Natural Resources Management. Lance David Auker. Tyler Matthew Dockett. Drew F. Graves. Corey Robert Gross. Dylan Thomas Guest. David J. Lauman. Sean Patrick McChesney. Colby Lynn Schallenberger. Nathan Taylor Weddy. Jared Lee Faust. Paul R. Brenneman. Trent Robert Brenneman. Benjamin P. Cower. Hi. Hi. Yes. Tyler J. Hyatt. Nolan T. Hollanden. Tyler A. Kratzer. Brendan Kyle Luff. Jared A. Mitchell. Nathan Lauren Pierce. Colin P. Robinson. Derek Stephen Black. Thomas M. DiGeronimo. Justin T. Mann. Cody Timothy Marshall.
Matthew Thomas Ripley. Brandon M. Wallizer. Elliot Martin Ward. Paul Gabriel Hine. Michael L. Marshall. President Gilmore, I present the graduates of Forest Technology within the School of Natural Resources Management. J. T. Anderson. <laughs> Dustin S. Bean. Cameron J. Cool. Kyle Allen Gibson. Michael A. Kojancic. Ryan S. Coons. Kyle Matthew Troutman. Ryan D. Werneth. Jenna Haley Weston. President Gilmore, I'm proud to present the graduates of Landscape Horticulture Technology, Landscape Emphasis, Plant Production Emphasis, Ornamental Horticulture, Landscape Technology Emphasis, all within the School of Natural Resources Management. Jackson James Albert. Matthew E. Brzezinski. Chad D. Flood. Jessica L. Slaughter. Kayla Ariana Seawald. Christina Marie Snyder. Ian David Hoffman. Jason Arthur Perch. Alexander T. River. Jer Jeremy L. Thorne. Jeremy E. Wilson. And Kyle Stewart Mullen. Your connection with the college does not end today. As graduates, you're now members of the Alumni Association, and that's your main link between you and your alma mater. We were going to ask you to keep in touch with the Alumni Association. You're going to hear from them monthly via their Alumni e-newsletter. And of course, I know that you'll use Facebook to tell us what's going on. We look forward to welcoming you back to campus not only to keep you informed about what we're doing, but we especially want to hear with what, about what you're doing. Now, I know you really want to get on with your celebration, but it's my honor on behalf of these distinguished faculty behind me and your family and friends to be the last person to get to speak to you before you go out into the world. So if you'll just afford me a few minutes to share some personal thoughts, I'll do that quickly and then send you off to your celebration. But for those few minutes, just imagine that it's me and all of you. We talk a lot about degrees that work at Penn College. The degrees that you earn today are going to accompany you on your imminent adventure. The degrees will represent a proud transition from who you were to who you will become. 
but it's more than a degree. You've earned an education. You've learned to become a whole person. You've learned about life, the world around you, and it's more than your degree that will help you be successful. It is all those other things that are so important, an important part of your Penn College education. It's overwhelming, I know that, and I'm supposed to ease the anxiety of those with some very well-chosen words of wisdom. I will tell you, it's never easy to follow your class representative because they do an incredible job, as Kyle did today. Not to mention, you've been given inspiring words by your family and friends and by our alumni today. But I'm going to borrow some of my remarks from the movies. After all, we're standing in a theater. I'm going to start with The Life of Pi, a film that notes quite correctly, as far as it goes, that, and I quote, all of life is an act of letting go. Think about that for a moment. When we got rid of our training wheels on our tricycles, when we waved goodbye to your parents when you went off to kindergarten, or when you walked down that high school hallway for the last time. And very soon, whether it's this weekend or in a few months, when you take your job, you're going to be letting go of a lot of things. And I said, as far as it goes, for an addition to letting go, there is the grabbing hold of something, embracing something new, even as you build upon what came before. You will have new friends, new opportunities and challenges, a new life, and some say a new you. Now let's talk about you. There's a fair amount of criticism for your generation, and I personally think it's unfounded. They say you put the my in my space. That's probably true. They say you put the I in iPhone, and I guarantee you that's true. They say you have built a circle of friends through Facebook, and in a, that is a community that exists solely on your terms. And that is true as well. So for the next few minutes, you have my permission to focus solely on yourself. This is a day that can be solely about you. It should be an honor to recognize your accomplishment. Only one third of Americans, fewer than 7% of the world's population have attained a college degree. That makes you very, very special. Take time to shout about it. Take time to celebrate with your classmates, with the faculty who are here with us today, and with the loving support network that you've established. Your achievement should carry great personal satisfaction, but it comes with great responsibility the responsibility to your community, and the responsibility to realize that you are big, a, a piece of a bigger thing. Now a voice from another film this year, Beasts of the Southern Wild, in which the heroine, a six-year-old force of nature named Hush Puppy, finds self-worth amid more adversity than a child should experience. She says, and I quote, I see that I'm a little piece in a big, big universe. And she says, that makes all things right. Out of the mouths of babes indeed. Your graduation is a singular achievement, but it makes you much part of a much bigger picture. I met many of you at Connections, and that's no accident that we call it that because while you may live every day on some sort of electronic island, in the real world, you are interconnected with everyone. Teachers will inspire students who become graduates and skilled workers and business owners and productive citizens of the world. Some of you will come back and teach, some will come back as employers and recruit, others will come back and endow scholarships or donate equipment, and all of you are mentors to the next class of students. So on and on through the decades, is, it is that year after year involvement with one another that is crucial to lifelong learning for all of us. I can assure you, I will not tell you the years, but life has changed since I graduated from college. 
In many ways, all of the things that truly matter, though, have not changed. Family, friends, education, good deed, and quality work are no less at the forefront than what we do best. As you get wrapped up in the careers that you're ready for, I challenge you to channel Hush Puppy to honor your role in a piece of something bigger than yourself and give the world as much as you take. You will soon pass into history, having left your mark on Penn College, your colleagues, and the faculty behind me. Among you, are, there are many familiar faces, you have distinguished yourself in service to the institution, to your fellow students, and your broader neighborhood. It won't be easy. Which brings me to my line of movie dialogue. And I quote, a tree falls the way it leans. Be careful which way you lean. Now that is from Dr. Seuss's The Lorax. But it might as well come from Dr. Ringling's forestry syllabus. How you grow and how you lean will affect everything that happens to you once you walk out of here on 4th Street. You will be faced with innumerable choices from here on, forks in the road that will lead you to decidedly different incomes, or outcomes rather, and incomes. <laughs> That's Freud, alive and well. I have faith that you will choose wisely I wish you the poise, the strength, and the bravery as you weather the life-altering choices ahead of you. May the decisions you make, the decisions for which all of us here today have prepared you, allow you to become the best of whomever you are. Your class need not wait for the wind to guide your ship. You do not have to settle for anything. Play by the rules but set your own course. This is your moment, the time in which you were born. Embrace it, transcend us, transcend it, and let us know what happens next. I hope you will cherish your fellowship with those who have come before you. With their guidance, you too can be a distinguished alumni, an inspiring mentor in our second hundred years. And now, I offer you my personal congratulations for your accomplishments, and I wish you all the success. And most importantly, go out into the world today and make us Penn College proud. Thank you very much. I invite those who are able to stand, gentlemen, remove your caps, and everyone to join in the singing of the Penn College alma mater. The words can be found on page two of your program. Yes. 